Our topic today is using initial rate data to figure out the kinetics of a reaction. So our example reaction is this one here. This is our net ionic. We've got some ammonium reacting with nitrite ion to form nitrogen gas and water. We are given a set of data that includes initial rates. So what I would like you to do right now is pause this and copy down this data table because we're going to keep coming back to this thing. Okay, so now you're, you've copied it down. And so we know that the only way to figure out a rate law for a reaction is um, figuring it out experimentally. So this is one type of data that we could be given to, um, to figure out a rate law. So we're given three different scenarios, three different experiments where this is our concentration to begin with, with ammonia, ammonium. Here's our initial concentration of nitrite. And then moments after the two are combined, this is the rate of change in terms of reactants becoming products. So 1.35 times 10 to the minus 7th moles per liter second. All right, and so then we'll vary the initial concentrations to see how that affects the initial rate of the reaction. From this data, we then should um, be able to find out some things about this reaction. So what sorts of things? Well, from all those numbers, we are going to determine the order for each reactant. Is it a zero order, a first order, or a second order reactant? From that, then, we will be able to write the rate law for the reaction. Uh, we can then determine the overall reaction order if that's asked of us, which it's not very often anymore. And finally, at the, this particular temperature, we will determine the value of the rate constant K. The first thing I always do in this scenario is write the general form of the rate law. So the general form of the rate law will be rate rate equals K times the concentration of, and now what we need to do is we need to go back to our reaction. I won't continue to do this, but I'm going to now. Okay, here is the reaction. Here are our two reactants. So that's what we're going to write into the rate law, the general form of the rate law anyway. So rate equals K times ammonium. And by convention, we're going to say to the nth power. That's our unknown. We need to find that. We need to know what order reactant ammonium is. Times nitrite to the nth power. Okay, so this is the general form of the rate law. We don't know our superscripts at this point. We don't know our, um, our exponents, which describe the order of the reactant. But we're going to use that data to figure these things out. So our first task being determine the order for each reactant. And so this is how we're going to do it. We are going to choose two experiments in which one of the concentrations of a reactant, so the concentration of one reactant remains the same, the concentration of the other reactant is changed, and see how that affects the overall rate of the reaction. And so, I'm going to start with 
um, experiment one and experiment two. In experiment one and experiment two, the concentration of ammonium stays the same. The concentration of nitrite changes. And so, by keeping this the same, I can see what effect this change in concentration has on the rate of the reaction. I'm going to say experiment two over experiment one. From the data, I'm going to write down the rates of each of those. So, for experiment two, the rate was 2.70 times 10 to the minus 7. And basically, you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this thing out for experiment 2 and experiment 1. And you'll see in the end what that allows me to do. So I'll say rate equals K times the concentration of ammonium which in this case, for experiment two, was 0 0.100 molar. That's going to go to the nth power. And then what comes next? The concentration of the nitrite. And experiment two, that was 0 0.01 molar to the nth. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. So. The rate for experiment one, you should be looking at your data right now. Look at the data table and you'll see where I'm getting this. 1.35 times 10 to the minus 7 is equal to, and again, I'm just writing out the general form of the rate law, but plugging in my known concentrations from my data table. Um, equals K times... 0 0.100 to the nth, 0 0.005 to the nth. Now, hopefully, what you can see by doing this, you guys, we've chosen two experiments where this stays the same. So now what can we do? We're going to cancel this. We're going to cancel that. We're going to cancel all of that leaving us with a way, hopefully, to figure out the value of M. So, here 2.7 divided by 1.35 is going to be 2. This is 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.005, 2 to the M. Now, this is a super easy example. Looking at this, what is our value for M? Our value for M is 1. So M equals 1. And what does that tell us about nitrite? That tells us that nitrite is a first order reactant, or we can say that the reaction is first order with respect to nitrite. Okay, we've answered part of our question, so let's go here. So nitrite is first order, meaning that if we double the concentration of nitrite and hold everything else constant, that should double the rate. Okay, let's go back now and let's do the ammonium. So the next thing we need to do is we need to solve for N. 
we need to figure out what order reactant ammonium is. And in order to do that, I need two experiments where nitrite is held constant and ammonium's concentration changes. So that's going to be experiment two and three. Nitrite is held constant, the ammonium concentration is varied, and let's see what that does to the rate. Now some of you who are quick on the mark, you probably have already figured out that there is a way we can just look at the data most of the time and figure this out. But we'll talk about that in class tomorrow. Okay, um, so we're going to use experiment three over two. And the reason I'm going three over two instead of two over three is because in the end I would rather have a whole number to look at than a decimal. That's just me. It wouldn't have mattered. I could have done one over two and it would have been 0.5 to the 0.5 and I would rather it be a number over one myself. Okay, so um, now let's solve for n. So what is the order of ammonium? So I'm going to use experiment 3 over experiment Two to do this, and basically I'm just going to put the general form of the rate law in the numerator and the denominator, and I'm going to substitute in the concentrations that are given to me in my data. So for experiment three, the rate is going to be 5.40 times 10 to the minus 7 is equal to K times the concentration 0 0.200, and that's raised to the nth and nitrite is 0 0.010 and that's raised to the m even though now I know what that I know what that is what m is what that number should be okay and experiment 2 my initial rate was 2.70 times 10 to the minus 7 is equal to k times what am I at 0 0.100 to the nth, 0 0.010 to the f. Okay, now if I've set this up correctly, I'm going to be able to cancel out my k's, cancel out that, cancel out that, leaving me with an unknown that is manageable. And again, our numbers are turning out very nicely. 2 equals 2 to the nth. So, n again equal to 1. So I'm going to write it the other way now. The reaction is first order with respect to ammonium. So that means that ammonium is a first order reactant. If we hold everything else constant, and we double the concentration of ammonia in the reaction, it's going to double the rate. Okay, so, oops. we know that ammonium is first order as well. So we have two first order reactants. Um, so now that we have figured out what the order of the reactants are, we can write the rate law. So it will be rate equals K ammonium. Do I really need to write the one to the first power? I don't. If there's nothing there, then we can make the assumption that it is a first order reactant times the concentration of nitrite. But if it'll make you feel better, I'll put to the first power there. But most of the time, you guys, those are just left off. If there is no superscript or exponent, that means that thing is first order. Okay, now, in order to figure out the overall reaction order, 
we are going to take the orders of each reactant and sum them together. So that is very easy. Um, N plus M, 1 plus 1 equals 2. So the reaction is second order over all. If you're asked for that information. So you're simply summing the exponents. All right, and then last but not least, we are being asked to determine the value of the rate constant, K. All right, and in order to do that, now that we know the rate law, we can plug in. So again, I'm going to write the rate law, rate equals K times the concentration of ammonium, and that's going to be to the first power, nitrite, again, that's going to be to the first power, and so I know this, 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 for any one of the experiments, and so I can solve for the rate constant K, keeping in mind that that K value is only a constant at one temperature. If you change the temperature, you are going to change the value of K. So, I am going to use information from experiment one. So, here's my concentrations. Here is my rate that was experimentally obtained. And using these three, I'm plugging into the rate law, I can figure out the value of K, the rate constant. So that's where my numbers are coming from. Experiment one. It wouldn't matter. I could use, I could use any of the data. It should come out the same, or very nearly the same. So I'm going to say the rate is 1.35 times 10 to the minus second, and now I'm going to put in units, moles per liter second is equal to K times 0 0.100 moles per liter, and that's going to be to the first power, but I'm just going to leave it alone because it's to the first times what is my concentration of nitrite in experiment number one, 0 0.0050 moles per liter. And again, it's to the first power, to the first power, but I'm going to leave it. I end up getting a value of K if I take, now for this little bit I'm going to leave out the units, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 0 0.100, 0 0.005 0. Okay, this is the arithmetic that I'm going to do here. And that leaves me with a value of K that is 2.7 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now, I'm going to write the units for K. You're not going to understand how I have come up with the units for K. You will. We will go over a lesson about how we're going to do it. Um, they're different. The, the, the units for K vary. So, in this case, my units for K are going to be liters per mole second. Okay, that's the end. I tried to talk.